everybody. I'm Storm Ushry, Conservation Education Manager with the New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. And in today's video, I'm very excited. We're going to have three of our department biologists joining us today. And we just want to enlighten people, educate them a little bit on if someone is interested in a career as a wildlife biologist, they're wanting to get into wildlife management. So whenever we get done with today's recording, hopefully some of the information that we're able to give you today, you can take that and kind of use it as a roadmap to kind of help out um, you as you try to plan out your college career and getting into this profession. So with that, instead of me introducing our presenters today, I'll just kind of let them take it off and they're going to introduce themselves today. So we're going to start with Austin today. Hi everyone, my name is Austin Teague. I am the Southeast Wildlife Biologist for New Mexico Game and Fish. I've been on with New Mexico Game and Fish for about eight and a half years now. On, I've held a few different positions uh, through my time with the agency. Uh, I started off as a conservation officer um, located in Clayton and then located in uh, Carlsbad or the Guadalupe Mountains. And then from there, I promoted into the Northeast Wildlife Biologist position held that job for a couple years and then transferred down to the Southeast, which is where I am at currently. And um, gotta say it, I'm originally from Texas. So sorry to any of you native New Mexicans out there. Um, and uh, my alma mater is Texas Tech. So gotta throw that in there too. Thanks. I'm Casey Cardinal. I am the resident game bird biologist for the department. I have been on for almost six years now, and I've been in the same position the whole time. I just love it. Um, I, I moved here most recently from Colorado, but I am actually a native Wisconsin -ite, so. Hi, my name is Elise Goldstein. I'm the assistant chief of the wildlife section in the wildlife management division. So I've been with the department forever and ever um, for almost 20 years now. Um, because it's such a great place to work, I haven't wanted to leave. Um, I actually started out as the bighorn chief biologist and I was in that job for about 12 years. Um, and then I um, moved into the carnivore and small mammal program supervisor position. Did that for almost three years. And I've been in this current job for almost five years. So I'm a native of the East Coast. I came here from Maryland. Um, and, um, but I think I've been in New Mexico long enough that I'm almost considered a native at this point. Thank you all. I appreciate those introductions and I'm excited to have you all here today. We're, we've got a lot of diverse backgrounds um, and I think it's gonna be interesting with our conversation today. And I'd like to go ahead and start with a question. Um, and I think the first question maybe some folks may have is if I want to get into wildlife management or I want to become a wildlife biologist, is there a specific college degree that you would recommend that they entertain looking at getting or is there a degree requirement? So if we can just kind of touch base on that. Well, my, my undergraduate degree was in wildlife ecology. I, I went to the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, and then my graduate degree was at, in wildlife biology from Utah State University. So I highly recommend if, if your school does have a wildlife degree track, uh, if, if you're interested in wildlife biology, I, I, I would definitely recommend that. But I know that a lot of schools don't have that specialty. So anything in the natural resources would be good. Uh, I'll, I'll probably defer to Elise since she's an assistant chief. She knows a little bit more about the ins and outs of hiring than I do, but uh, I, I highly recommend wildlife ecology or biology. Well, I, Casey, I completely agree with you. I think that your advice is spot on. Um, so where I went, I went to undergrad at Berkeley and um, at that time they had 
they didn't have a wildlife tract. So um, my major is basically in forestry with a wildlife emphasis. Um, turns out that managing trees is only a little bit different than managing animals. So I think I still got some really good background. Um, and I was able to fill in with a few individual classes um, uh, to get a little more of the, of the wildlife experience. And then my master's degree is, is in wildlife sciences. So um, probably similar to, to the, the degree that Casey got. And, and it's pretty typical that we hire people who have master's degrees. So um, some of the folks we hire have PhDs. So we do hire people with just bachelor's degrees. Um, but there's not as many jobs that way. So most of our jobs just have a bachelor's degree requirement, but because so many people have master's degrees and even PhDs, it's just tough to compete if you don't have um, that skill set that you gain from um, a master's. But um, as Austin can tell you, that's not 100% true across the board. So I'll pass it on to you. Pretty much just like the, like Casey and Elise said, um, any kind of degree in the natural resources field can land you a job in the wildlife uh, realm. Um, I know personally people that have degrees in range management, um, heck, even people with fisheries management that ended up working in wildlife. Um, there's a lot of uh, overlap uh, within those degree forms. Uh, I know a lot of people too have general biology degrees as well. Um, but my suggestion is, is to look for a school that has a natural resources program or department. Um, and those degrees are gonna be the most beneficial for you to move forward into a state agency or consulting firm or federal agency with, with a wildlife job. I, my degree is uh, in wildlife and fisheries management uh, from Texas Tech University, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and also, like Elise said, um, we do hire uh, wildlife biologists get hired more easily if they have a master's degree. Um, I'm one of the few exceptions where I actually only have a bachelor's. I did start my master's, but ended up getting hired on uh, with New Mexico Game and Fish before finishing. So um, I would say that it's in your best interest to probably get a master's, but it's not necessarily a requirement, especially if you can get a lot of experience um, in the field with other um, grad students or agencies and that sort of thing uh, to kind of fill in that void of uh, the extra research and that sort of stuff that you get with a uh, master's degree. I appreciate that. I guess my next question I would like to get into would be if you could kind of explain a little bit, kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, what you might do in your job. You know, do you spend a mixture of office and field time? Do you get to assist with other wildlife uh, projects around the state, assisting other biologists? I think just a little bit of insight into what you do with your job would be very interesting. And Kind of a second half to that question would be, is there any sort of life skill that you have found has been very beneficial for you on the job that maybe it's something you didn't really learn in high school or maybe in college, but something that somebody could kind of pick up today and start practicing um, that would help them, it would be advantageous for them to learn it as they get into this profession. My current job is, um, I would say like 85% office work. And then I'd split the remaining 15% between field work and traveling to meetings. So the main part of my job is to um, supervise the wildlife biologists, the trust your wildlife biologists. So I try to clear the way for them to bring their really wonderful and amazing and innovative and helpful ideas of um, projects we can work on to help with wildlife um, and help them focus them so we can get really good results and to help clear the way to get those projects on the ground. So like any good government agency, there's just lots and lots of administrative things we have to do, um, lots of them uh, dealing with um, money and we get a lot of federal grants. Um, we need a lot of 
permissions and permits. We collaborate with other divisions within our agency. And so I try to help make sure that that all happens. Um, that planned out really well so that we don't get a week before the project and go, oh my goodness, we totally forgot about this thing that takes four months. <laughs> and then the project gets canceled, which would be horrible. Um, so I make sure we stay on those timelines so that those can get, um, can get on the ground. And so it's definitely not the glamorous part of the wildlife management, but it's really fulfilling just because um, I have such amazing staff and they have such amazing ideas and things they want to do. And so it's really just terrific to see those projects get on the ground, knowing that they would, a lot of those projects would stall out or get delayed by a year or just not go off as smoothly or collect as much information, you know, without that behind the scenes work. And so, um, and I get to see just all the different variety of projects. So I really enjoy that. Um, I go in the field uh, partially because that's where my soul is. And so I have to go reconnect with my soul sometimes and go in the field, but it also helps me better support my staff because if I can understand their projects, um, I can go to bat for them better. Um, sometimes when you're sitting at your desk and your staff comes and tells you things they need in the field, it's easy to just say like, that sounds ridiculous. You don't really need that. It's, you know, you guys are just complaining or and then you get out there and you see it and you're like, okay, now I get it. Now I understand what this is about. And um, I got some advice a long time ago to, to make sure to keep going in the field throughout my career. And I think that was really good advice. So I, I try to do that. Um, and then there's a few committees and groups that I'm involved with. And so when the world is more normal, we meet several times a year throughout those groups. And so I get to travel a little bit to go to those meetings. Um, advice of things that I've learned along the way that I wish I had maybe picked up on sooner. Um, a couple of things, I, I think um, my advisor in college once said to me, wildlife management is all about people management. And I completely poo-pooed that. Um, and it turns out that was maybe the most true thing anyone has ever said to me. And so we work with a lot of different people who have a lot of different ideas and opinions and knowing how to talk with them so that you they feel heard and listened to you and that you can have a conversation with them and um, work together is a lot um, a lot harder, I think, than, than I thought it would be coming into this. And so there's a whole study of sociology and, and I would recommend that people take a class in that maybe as an undergrad or and there's lots of materials that have been written on working working with people with diverse interests and ideas and backgrounds and trying to pull that together so you can um, um, get some good work going. So I think that's something that that I was not really aware of um, until I started working for the agency. And I think that would be an important thing um, to, to, to have, develop some skills in coming into the career. Cool. I think uh, Elise probably touched on a few things that I'll probably touch on with this question. Um, uh, one thing, though, uh, she mentioned that her position may not be that glamorous. I would call my position within the agency or in the wildlife field probably the glamorous position because I'm the one that's usually up in the helicopter uh, flying surveys for deer and elk uh, and pronghorn uh, involved in a lot of our captures for big game species. And, and I would say that no day is the same um, as, as the regional wildlife biologist. It kind of comes in spurts where you work on certain things during, the, during different times of the year. Um, so my, my duties is basically uh, managing the wildlife within my region uh, for uh, sustainable populations for hunters and also kind of disseminating information that happens in headquarters down to the regional or the, the area office uh, staff, which includes other biologist positions and the conservation officers that work out of the Southeast area. So I disseminate that information. But back to kind of what I said before uh, on how it's kind of a, uh, a yearly cycle of things that happen uh, in the in the summer, I'll just start there. Uh, I fly pronghorn surveys um, and then I move into the fall. Um, I fly elk surveys after, after archery season, before rifle season. Um, 
And during the hunt season, since I am still a commissioned officer, I will work a few hunts, help the officers out uh, by checking hunters and that sort of thing. Uh, then move into December, uh, I fly the deer surveys. And then usually January through February, there's some sort of capture project going on uh, across the state that I'm usually involved in. And since we're a small agency, even if it's not happening in my area, I'm usually involved in one of those capture projects. And then we get into the spring, which I deal a lot with uh, private landowner uh, signups into our private land elk system program, which is called E+. Also our deer incentive program, uh, which recognizes landowners for doing uh, habitat work for the benefit of mule deer. So spring is generally dealing with signups and that sort of thing. And then, and then I come back to the summer again with pronghorn surveys. And those are the major things. Uh, there's a lot of little stuff that happens in between all of that. Uh, I help Casey sometimes with uh, ground surveys for quail in the spring and fall. Uh, we got lesser prairie chicken surveys that happen in the spring. Um, so any kind of wildlife survey that might be going on within my area, I usually help out with. Um, and I also help out with other, other regional staff um, with, you know, I've helped out with vegetation surveys and stuff with our habitat biologist um, and then uh, depredation complaints with our private land staff. So uh, it, you kind of can make the job what you want it to be and you get to do a lot of different things. And, and like Elise said, I think the biggest skill that's not really taught in college is that uh, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of people um, from a lot of different backgrounds and everyone gets into wildlife because they want to work with wildlife and they're like, oh, I'm not a people person. I want to be out in the woods and do wildlife stuff. Well, you're going to have to learn to be a people person because you, that is the majority of your job is dealing with different const uh, constituents that want to do or deal with wildlife in some form or fashion, whether it be landowners, public hunters, uh, wildlife watchers, and just your own, uh, your own, uh, other employees that you work with. So I think that's the biggest key. And then anything field related is also very beneficial. Um, I got my Eagle Scout uh, whenever I was in high school, but a lot of stuff I learned there can tr be translated to a lot of the field work I do, especially when it comes to uh, being prepared with like emergency first aid kind of stuff, um, changing a tire, anything that can go wrong, will go wrong in the field. So just being prepared for a whole gambit of things that could happen to you. Now I'll, I'll turn it over to Casey now. I think I talked too much. You have an interesting job, Austin. It's okay to sell that. <laughs> um, so I, I would agree with Austin. I feel like my job is, is pretty glamorous as well. Uh, for a state, uh, wide position. I, I'm based out of headquarters. I actually do get out into the field quite a bit still. And like Elise said, that's my soul. So I really need that to keep going in this job. Uh, so on a on a day-to-day -day basis, much like Austin said, it's never the same day-to-day. -day. Uh, in, in the winter, I'm capturing turkeys and I'm mostly working with turkeys in the winter since when it's cold, that's the best time to trap wildlife a lot of times. That's the best time to survey wildlife. So in the winter, we're trapping, we're surveying turkeys. We get into spring, we're surveying quail. So we're out on the ground doing these driving routes. Uh, summer tends to be more my downtime. And that's when I work on grant paperwork. We renew our grants, then we report for our federal grants in the summer. So I, I, like I said, I do spend some time in the office. That's when I work on the data that I've collected in the winter and the spring. Uh, so summer is, is pretty busy in the office for me. Uh, once fall gets rolling, we get quail surveys going again. Uh, and then a lot of my fall, like Austin and Elise mentioned, is talking to people. Uh, folks are really interested in quail hunting. So I talk to a bunch of hunters every year. I talk to magazine article writers, 
We want to know like what the season perspective is going to look like. And then, um, like Elise mentioned, I also work with other biologists from different states. We have these regional groups that that either work on turkey and quail are my two big ones. Uh, and then I, I cover a multitude of species. Turkey and quail are definitely my major like work area, but I have grouse, I have pheasant, and I have tree squirrels as well. And so some of those species are also in these big groups and we do a little bit of work on them. Since there's less of them in the state, they get a little bit less of my time, but uh, we, we still include them because it's important to know what's going on with all the species you manage. So um, I think that's most of my, my job duties. As far as life skills, definitely talking to people, they don't mention that, especially as an undergrad. Uh, I, I spent most of my childhood running around outside. Uh, we just owned like a really small farm. So I would recommend spending a bunch of time outside because if you're in the field, sometimes I'm out for like five days at a time, you're not showering, uh, you're, you're really dirty and you just have to be okay with that. And it's a lot of fun if you are. And let's see, stuff like Boston mentioned, navigation is important, first aid is important. Um, Four-wheel drive, driving is important. Uh, when I was a technician, I buried my truck in the sand and spent two days digging it out. So just, just knowing to avoid those kind of situations, I highly recommend that. Righty, thank you all, I appreciate that. As uh, we start to kind of wind down with our recording today, um, this one will kind of be a, a two-part question, if you will. If we have maybe some mid-school kids that are transitioning into high school and they're maybe interested in being a wildlife biologist, or we have some high school kids already that are interested, the first part would be, are there certain um, topics or courses that they should maybe focus more on and that's going to help them as they transition into their college career. So it'll, it'll kind of help them out further down the road. And number two, if someone has the opportunity to do any type of volunteer work, or maybe they're already in college and they want to do some internships or co-ops, are those beneficial and, and how should they treat those opportunities? Sure, thanks, Storm. Um, first off, for the middle school and high school kids, um, you know, it really depends on what school they're going to and what's being offered. So I would just say that in any kind of classes that are going to be uh, in the science field are probably going to be beneficial uh, moving forward. But like I said, uh, it really depends on what, what school you're going to and what classes they have. Um, and, and volunteering is also beneficial at that age. I started really early. Whenever I was in middle school, I started volunteering at the Abilene Zoo. Uh, I grew up in Abilene, Texas for a little bit. So I actually, uh, part of that program that I got involved in was basically following the zookeepers around and uh, taking care of all the animals, providing enrichment to them and that sort of thing. And so I got a lot of really good hands-on animal husbandry experience at a really early age, which I know a lot of people don't get that opportunity to do, but um, it, it really helps me on the wildlife capture side, just having that experience early on, being hands, hands on with wild animals. I mean, not, they're not really wildlife, but they are still wild animals. And so um, moving, you know, being able to draw on that ex early age experience uh, really does help me whenever I'm having to tackle an elk um, out of the helicopter. So I think, I think uh, if you can find ways to get in and do kind of volunteer work like that, I mean, not everyone's going to have a zoo, but uh, if you grow up in a small town, I'm sure there's a lot of ranches around that need help. Um, so any of, the, any of that kind of activity 
I feel will one, strengthen your work ethic and two, um, will kind of provide you with some basic knowledge of, of stuff that uh, might happen, uh, especially you know maintenance wise and that sort of stuff that you would have to take care of on a ranch. But um, I, I feel like that stuff would be pretty beneficial uh, going into the wildlife field. Not to mention you have to deal with landowners constantly. So um, working with them would be a good way to uh, uh, figure out how to talk their lingo and that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, uh, going into college though, um, it is extremely beneficial to hold those internships and uh, technician jobs. Um, I started off working for grad students at the university that I went, at, went to school at, uh, did a lot of prairie chicken work with them. But uh, even the summers, I would suggest that people instead of going home and uh, taking it easy during the summers between their uh, semesters would actually go and apply to um, temporary seasonal wildlife technician jobs, um, it, you know, anywhere across the country. Uh, they, they have a lot of those available every summer for different kinds of research projects and that sort of thing. And being able to hold different jobs uh, can also help you decide kind of what wildlife you might want to actually work with and what wildlife you don't want to work with. Um, I held uh, jobs working with flying squirrels um, out in Lake, around Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and then, uh, and then uh, greater sage grouse in Colorado. So it, there is a lot of opportunity there to spend your summers doing something useful, especially if you want to work in the wildlife field. I'll definitely echo what Austin has said. So as a, um, I mean, it really does depend on your school that you're going to for, for middle and high school students. Where I went to high school, there was separate classes in the agriculture department. So I took equine science, I took um, oh, other egg classes. And then there was a fresh, fresh water ecology class uh, through our science program. So I, I kind of steered towards them, them and it gives you a good base foundation for some of the science classes you'll take once you get into your undergrad. Uh, I definitely recommend uh, a class in math and statistics too. You don't realize how much you're gonna use stats until you're, you're trying to figure out what's happening to the wildlife population you're managing and, and that, that information is important and, and those skills are important. Um, I, I would agree with Austin, like I grew up working with animals and that does help just kind of knowing a little bit about what's going through the animal's mind while you're handling it is it's important, especially if you're gonna be trapping and, and doing any research studies. And then, uh, I, I agree with Austin more so that once you get into college, your opportunities really open up. Uh, you can take more of those specialized classes in any of the natural resources fields. The summer internships, wildlife uh, technician jobs, those are super important. And not only that, they're really fun. Uh, you, you get to move anywhere and, and work with anything. It, it's great, they tend to last about three months long. Um, but while you're in school, like get involved with your wildlife club. I spent weeks cutting deer heads open for CWD sampling when that was hot in Wisconsin. I helped salamanders move across the road. We did prescribed burns. A lot of times those wildlife clubs will have a lot of those activities uh, that just kind of get you skills. And, and work with grad students. Uh, if there's a grad student who's doing radio telemetry, I use that in almost every single technician job I had. So that's good to know before you graduate from undergrad. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah, I'm, I mean, just in, enjoy working with different species. If you're afraid to move, like I lived in at least eight different states and worked on as many projects with as many species and 
explore the different animals and see what you like. Uh, you don't need to specialize in, in a field. I love birds, so it worked out well to specialize in game birds for me, but just try everything and be comfortable living in a small quarter with a lot of people. I lived in a camper with like four technicians at almost every job I worked, so. Well, I think that Austin and Casey covered a lot of things and had really good advice. And um, I mean, it worked out for them. So I would definitely encourage you all to follow their advice. Um, so I won't repeat that um, those things. The only thing I guess I'd add is um, what Casey mentioned um, on the college level to take statistics. I completely agree. Um, I would also say that you know, I went into this because I love biology. I didn't, however, really love chemistry and physics so much um, and wasn't particularly good at them, wasn't great at math, but those are still requirements for these jobs for most or for these degrees. And so I'm really glad that I took those classes in high school um, and even took some of those AP classes in high school, even if I struggled with some of them, because when I went to college, it was just so much harder. <laughs> and I was really glad that I had at least some background. I think that's kind of what saved me. So don't shy away from that stuff, like jump right in. And if I could give my freshman in college self some advice, I would have like gone to tutoring centers. Like I went to office hours, but I really struggled in some of those. And I wish I had, I wish I had taken the extra step to like go get tutors. I think if I had a little more one-on-one -on -one help, I would have understood it better. Like it just took me a little longer to understand those concepts. And I think um, in retrospect, I wish I had um, invested those resources to, to um, get that additional help. Cause those things, um, they're still important, even if you don't necessarily see the importance at the time you're taking those classes. Um, for internships, yeah, they're critical. And so one of the problems I see is that when I advertise a job for a field tech, I get a minimum of 30 applicants for any job that I put out there. So it's really hard to actually get one of those jobs. So I think there's a couple of things you can do to help stack the odds in your favor. And um, so I would say you need to set yourself apart and show why you are so much more amazing than anyone else. And part of the way to do that is not just to say like what you did. So you went out and you, um, you know, observed birds, but like what sort of initiative did you show? Like you independently had to keep up data sheets and you independently had to keep up the equipment to show that you had responsibilities important. Um, I would also say, please take advantage of all the great resources that are out there to help strengthen the way you write your resume and your cover letter. I've gotten resumes from people who are clearly very smart and their resumes are terrible. Um, when I give my initial review, if I give your resume 30 seconds, it's a lot. So if, if I have to dig through it and try to figure out what's going on, I, I, I can't, I don't have time. So make sure you have a really strong resume. There's lots of resources online, lots of examples. I'm sure your universities have um, resource centers for that. So please, please, please take advantage of that. Um, as far as, let's see, what else can you do? You can get to know some people that you want to work for. <laughs> so when I have 30 resumes, I probably don't know any of them. So whoever I choose, I take a deep breath and cross my fingers and hope it's gonna work. <laughs> but if somebody has come and called me and said, I'm super interested, um, I had someone who just showed up at our office one day and he said, I have a bachelor's degree in biology. I just graduated, but I've decided I really want to be a wildlife biologist and I don't know how to get into the field now. Like I keep applying and I'm not getting jobs and I don't know what to do. I just wanted to come and talk to someone. And I was so impressed that he just showed up at our office because that had to have like, that had to, he must've been really nervous to do that. That in the end, one of our technicians fell through and we were like, oh my goodness, this person's supposed to start in three weeks and we don't have someone. And he wanted a job and boom, we gave him this field tech job and he, did a fantastic job, it worked out great. So it's hard to do that. It is hard to call people you don't know. It is hard to show up on their doorstep unannounced, but that is impressive that you took that initiative to say, I want this so much that I'm gonna do whatever it takes because I, that's the person I want working for me. I mean, I don't expect you to know necessarily how to be an expert in radio telemetry yet or how to identify every single kind of songbird yet. You're gonna get that skill when you come work for me, but I want to know that like 
you're just going to take the initiative to get done whatever needs to be done. And I'm not going to, it's not just that I ask you to do something and you do it. Like you've already figured out what needs to be done and taken care of it. And so, so I want to see that personality. Um, so I would definitely recommend trying to make those connections, which is hard. It takes a lot of cold phone calls and, but people in our profession tend to be really friendly. So, um, so I think you'll probably have some good, some good, um, uh, results with that. And then the last thing I would just say is work at any level of school that you're at. It doesn't matter if you're in middle school or, or a senior in college is work with your professors and your teachers to do a project. I mean, if you can just say that you did a senior project or you know, even a, 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 in high school that you did a project, you know, there's stuff for any age, any age group where you can go out and make observations and record data and, and discuss the results that you found and show that you are learning how to do science and that you want to do it and you enjoy doing it. Um, and you can do that, you know, maybe in college or high school, they'll even give you class credit for it. Um, you could maybe show your project at a science fair and it would be an incredible experience to to do that as well and again that shows a lot of initiative that you like just walked up to your teacher or your professor and said I want to do something I want to learn this so help me figure out something that I can go do and I can learn and I can contribute to the field while I'm learning and then you have something great to put on your resume to show that you took that initiative so so Ultimately, I mean, it is a little bit of a difficult field to get into for sure. Call people. Um, it's worth it though. I mean, all, all of us have gone through that and, and it's been hard and you apply for jobs and you don't get them and it's frustrating. But when you do get them, you know, those experiences are amazing. And, you know, as soon as you get that first job at Cascades, because suddenly you meet people and that can lead to meeting more people and getting those great new experiences and traveling to new places and getting your hands on all kinds of animals and seeing what you like and what you're good at. And, um, and so, yeah, so even though it's a tough time to get going, it's also really exciting. So. I just want to thank our presenters today. And uh, there was a lot of great information that was given today. And, and hopefully you're able to take little tidbits that all of the presenters were able to give and kind of use that. As I, as I said in the introduction, there to develop that roadmap to success and to get into the field of wildlife management, to become a wildlife biologist, to work around wildlife for the citizens of New Mexico. It is a very rewarding job. And hopefully um, we look forward to seeing you all with us one of these days. So with that, we're gonna end the recording and we'll see you on the next one.